Oh yeah, what's up guys? It's Curse Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action, back in the saddle today. I want to talk to you about Madame Web. That's right, this movie just launched today. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to go see it. Now, I haven't been a big fan of most of the latest comic book movies. But uh, you know what? This seems pretty new. So anyways, I've been using the Heartbeat tool as I do. Taking a look at a couple of the reviews out there. And I found one that I want to share with you. It's got some great moments that I think you guys are going to like. And of course, if you want to follow along with me, h.ki or hkey, let's get into it. This one is with Jeremy Johns or Jans. I'm not trying to pronounce his last name. Let's go. All right, so here I am at heartbeath.ki. Link's in the description below. And I'm just on my profile. I've clicked on moments. And you'll see here I've got actually 19 moments from his review. Now, the first one starts at a minute nine. And I point that out because the first minute of his review is some NordVPN uh, ad. And you know what? Hey, guys, we know NordVPN. Yeah, if you're looking up funky stuff or you want to be safe, yeah, just use it. But here's the thing. Heartbeat tool allows you to skip that first minute. So here we go. We're going to click it off and start it off at a minute nine. Rock and roll. Yeah. That's how you do an intro. Rock and roll. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you guys are, are YouTubers that are thinking about how should I start my videos? Yeah, maybe that's it. So anyways, let's kick it off here. We got Dakota Johnson as Madam Web. Stars Dakota Johnson as Madam Web. Yeah. Dakota Johnson's character can see the future before it happens. She has to babysit these three girls who are being hunted by this spider guy. <laughs> that is to say he's a guy with Spider-Man powers yeah. who's trying to kill them. They're essentially three Jane Connors she has to protect from Spider Terminator who wants to kill them because of who they will become later in life. Oh. I should note that one of those three is uh, Sydney Webb and... Uh, no, Sydney Sweeney, not Sydney Webb. Who the hell is Sydney Webb? Sydney Sweeney. And she is something else. Anyways, let's keep... For let's, let's go forward. I will say Dakota Johnson gives it her all. There are moments where she's yeah. actually having fun in here. Moments that feel like ad-libbed moments that actually do work in their own way. I believe these moments to be ad-libbed moments because they are anomalies in this film. That is <laughs> to say anomalies in the script. They're yeah, he's about to tell you how bad this script is. So he's got a weird face on him right here. But anyways, let's, let's listen to how bad these lines are in his opinion, of course. There are lines and moments delivered in this movie. You can almost feel someone step in while they were filming and be like, no, no ad-libbing. Read the line exactly as it's written in this script. It has a few screenwriters attached to it, two of which yeah. wrote Morbius. Can you do that? They are indeed awful because this script is hot. <laughs> Garbage. All right, so Jim Carrey wants his personality back. I got him on line one here. What the heck was that? That was in between Jim Carrey and a horse that, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, kind of funny, but uh, yeah, uh, recycled. Uh, but anyways, yeah, the script's hot garbage is his opinion. And uh, you know what? From the little bits that I've seen so far, I gotta, I'm going to sign with this guy here. Let's skip forward a little bit more, though. I've got a moment entitled, Help Me. Let's see what this one is. When these girls are in trouble, they're like, oh my gosh, are you going to help me? She's like, no, 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 I'm dropping you yeah. off with your parents. This is your parents' shit to deal with. After she's seen a super-powered spider guy walking on the ceiling trying to kill them, I was like, aren't you an EMT? Haven't you elected to save people just as a career path? Yeah, so we have an emergency response person who's got people reaching out to her that need help, and she turns them down. This is just absolutely nonsense. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, I look past those types of things in good movies, but in bad movies, you just go, why, why the hell would, what is this? Like, why would this even happen? But anyways, apparently this happens in, uh, Madame Webb. So anyways, let's skip forward a little bit here. Uh, let's talk about the three other people in the movie. Uh, they're, uh, not completely interchangeable. Apparently they've got their own unique personalities. Let's hear about that. Also, the girls who are being hunted by Spider Guy... They have their own characters, I'll give them that. They distinctly feel different. They have their different personality types. But I still don't know any more about them. That's, that's the extent that the movie gives me. They're there to be saved. They're PlayStation trophies, essentially. Yeah, they're PlayStation trophies. That's one way to, to put it. But guys, I mean, this is the this is the problem with a lot of movies in general, but comic book movies in, in particular. Like, the antagonists, the, the side people, the the... The non-protagonist characters, they're just cardboard cutouts. Like, they have no personality. Why are they even in it? 
Apparently this movie has more of that or more of this same. Let's skip forward a little bit more here where we talk about, I've called this one deep as a puddle. <laughs> Let's hear this. There's a couple of dialogue moments, but again, it's just dialogue moments. The movie tells, it doesn't show. That illusion of character aside, they're no deeper than, say, people in the mall in Dead Rising you need to save from the zombies. Yikes. You don't need to care about these characters any more than you have to care about them past the capacity of, oh, got to save them. So there it is, guys. The characters are forgettable. They just There's nothing going on there. They're just, again, cardboard cutouts. You don't buy into their backstory or anything. Yeah, just, you know what? It's it's becoming a cliche. It even, even in the Equalizer 3, like, the villains were just nobodies. I just could care less about them. But anyways, uh, this is what's going on with the latest, vid the latest movies. Let's skip forward to the villain. He talks about the villain and what he likes, doesn't like about the villain. As for the villain, Ezekiel Sims... Spider guy who's not Spider-Man, but has Spider-Man like powers. Yeah, he's a forgettable guy with spider powers, wants to kill these girls to alter the future, so he lives. Terminator. Played by Tahar Rahim, I don't know much about him, to be honest. I don't expect actors to always do the heavy lifting. Like I said, this this dude was shot in the knee from the get-go because he's in this movie with this script. Not everyone's gonna be Raul Julia in Street Fighter as Bison elevating the shit out of the content. Or yeah. Bison, Raul Julia, epic. Watch this one. Matt Smith and Morby is being like, okay, read the script. I'm yeah, going to have yeah. at least one scene that's going to go viral. If it can't be good, it's going to be memeable. This poor guy was in a movie that just made him boring. And to be fair to him, there were moments where he was saying things. And his lips did not match what he was saying. Was yeah, guys, did you ever watch those 1970s kung fu movies where Bruce Lee would talk? And then <laughs> the audio would try and catch up and vice versa and his lips would move and then the audio would kick in. Well, not the same, but similar concept. There was his voice you heard. There were just scenes where he was like, we must find them and they must die. And we've seen enough Spider-Man movies, played enough Spider-Man games. You know when Spider-Man is running along a building and he's swinging and he's flipping and he's doing his thing? His voice sounds like it's coming out of a body that is doing those acrobatics. So that is another big issue with the movie. The audio does not move with the villain. What the hell? Were they saving on budget or did they just hire a bad audio person? I don't know. Uh, I got another moment here. Uh, it's called Choo Choo. Let's check this one out. It's a cinematic train wreck with the worst script of the year so far. I get it. Still pretty early in the year. Still, feel like it's going to hold that title for a while. It's a mess that lacks cohesion. A superhero film that once again has shoddy CGI and action sequences. A forgettable antagonist and a protagonist that feels like Madam Web in name only. It so there is the summary. Maybe we should have started off with that. But uh, overall, it sounds like a pretty bad movie. I'm going to skip it. This is Jeremy Jan's review, guys. I've got, I think, the best moments from his review there. Using the heartbeat tool, h.k or hkey. Give it a crack. Thanks for watching.